Hi, I'm David Cornwell, a director with intellectual property law firm Stern, Kessler, Goldstein and Fox. On June 2, 2014, the U.S. Supreme Court issued its decision in Knotless v. Biosig Instrument. In that case, the Supreme Court determined what standards courts and the Patent Office must use to determine whether a patent claim complies with 35 U.S.C. Section 112, second paragraph. As many of you know, a patent claim defines the scope of an invention. U.S. patent law requires that a patent specification conclude with one or more claims particularly pointing out and distinctly claiming the subject matter which the applicant regards as his invention. Because of the inherent difficulty in drafting patent claims, there is often an ambiguity in claims. In the Knotless decision, the Supreme Court addressed the level of permissible imperfection. In that case, the patent in dispute involved a heart rate monitor used with exercise equipment. The patent contends that it improves on the prior art by detecting and processing ECG signals in a way that filters out interference. The claim called for a live electrode and a common electrode mounted in spaced relationship with each other. The district court granted Nautilus's motion for summary judgment on the ground that the patent term in spaced relationship with each other failed 112 second paragraphs indefiniteness requirement. The Federal Circuit reversed and remanded, concluding that a patent claim passes the 112 second paragraph threshold so long as the claim is, quote, amenable to construction, unquote, and the claim as construed is not insolubly ambiguous. Under that standard, the court determined the patent survived indefiniteness review. However, the Supreme Court vacated the Federal Circuit decision and remanded the case. It found that the standard, namely insolubly ambiguous, fails to comply with the statutory requirement of 112. The Supreme Court has created a new test that replaces the insolubly ambiguous standard. They indicate that a patent is invalid for indefiniteness if its claims read in light of the specification delineating the patent and the pa prosecution history fail to inform with reasonable certainty those skilled in the art about the scope of the invention. Drafting patent claims is one of the most difficult tasks that a patent lawyer can undertake. It requires that a patent lawyer simultaneously be a technologist, a linguist, and a lawyer. The Knotless case will likely increase the number of challenges to the definiteness of patent claims. Hopefully, the Knotless decision will lead to better patent claims. This will help both defendants and patent holders and will lead to more certainty. Thank you.